the next thing that I'd like to talk about is, I mean, so this is all I had to say about, uh, uh, you know, uh, passive RLC networks. Okay, and uh, the next thing I'd like to uh, talk about is, well, what happens when you have a big network and you want to simplify the treatment of noise. For example, I mean, uh, we have seen uh, similar situations uh, before, right? So, we have a big amplifier or a big uh, uh, network inside, I mean, with, uh, you know, multiple R's, uh, L's and C's and, uh, you know, transistors. And it turns out that every, as I uh, promised uh, before, uh, every transistor uh, also has uh, noise associated with it. A simplistic model for the noise in a transistor, it turns out that uh, as far as small signals are concerned, we know the small signal equivalent of the transistor can be, of the MOS transistor can be uh, kind of shown to be this one here, where this is GM times VGS and this is RO. I, you are familiar with all this and we are not going to go into the details. So, it turns out that the transistor also adds noise of its own, all right. And the noise current is, well, it is a, a, you know, to find the spectral density of that noise current, you have to go through the physics of the uh, MOS transistor and then it turns out that uh, the formula is. 8 k t by 3 times eta times g m. And what are the, what are the units? It is ampere square per hertz. Okay. And that eta is some non-ideality factor that uh, whose details depend on, uh, on the transistor channel length and all that uh, fun stuff. But uh, as far as circuit work is concerned, we just assume uh, without, we are not going to go and sit and derive how you get. 8 k t over 3 eta times g m just like we did not derive or we did not question the fact that the noise spectral density of uh, voltage spectral density of the resistor is 4 k t r. Okay? We just take that for granted and work with it. So, if you have uh, an op amp for instance with uh, you know uh, 25 transistors, each transistor is now associated with a noise source with the spectral density. Note that the spectral density depends on the operating point of the transistor. Correct? So, uh, when you linearize uh, uh, the nonlinear circuit for uh, after calculating its operating point, uh, you can also add in the appropriate noise sources, and therefore you now end up with a linear network, right, with R, L, C, and controlled sources, and a whole bunch of noise sources inside. Correct, and uh, so. R, L, C and then a uh, whole lot of transistors and uh, with their associated noise sources, all right. And the question is what happens with, you know, what happens, I mean, evidently the output now not only consists of the input signal that is processed by uh, whatever transfer, uh, small signal transfer function that uh, the box has to offer, but also is accompanied by by noise that the internal devices inside the box add uh, 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 to each of the branch currents and branch voltages. Hmm? And uh, when we have a big box like this, and uh, you know, uh, while it is true that the internals of the box are of interest to the person who designs the box, correct? Uh, I mean, when I am giving the box to you, for instance, I mean, you, you know, you are a user of the box, you do not really care about all the gory details of the construction inside the box, correct? I mean, just like, you know, you have a cell phone, I mean, you know, you are not going to go and like, uh, as soon as you get your phone, new phone, you are not going to rip it the whole thing apart and look, you know, what, uh, what ICs are there inside and, you know, uh, what parts have been used, okay? As far as you are only concerned about how the 
the user interface looks. Okay. Uh, in a similar fashion, given this box, you know, as a user of this box, I'm only concerned about what the within quotes, you know, features or properties of this box are. For instance, I might be worried about the input impedance of this box. I might be worried about the output impedance. I'll be worried about the gain. Okay. And uh, you know, as a designer of the box uh, or a vendor of the box, I have all that I need to do is to tell you, the user, that oh, this is the input impedance. This is the this is the output impedance, this is the gain or you know, equivalently, I'll give you the four uh, uh, two port parameters, you know, whichever favorite, uh, you know, uh, you have, right, you know, Y or, you know, Z or, uh, you know, H or G or whatever, okay, right. Uh, and these four parameters basically, you know, distill all the information regarding the internals of the box as far as behavior across these two ports are concerned. Okay. Now, likewise, there are there could be a million noise sources inside the box, correct? But as a user, I'd like to have a simpler representation of this these myriad noise sources inside the box. Okay? It doesn't uh, you know uh, 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 help me to basically uh, it doesn't help if you just gave me a big schematic with you know uh, 500 noise sources and you know all sorts of uh, wake transfer functions from each noise source to the output. Right. All I'm interested in is I have this big box. Right. I know it's uh, you know uh, it's uh, 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 you know two port parametric representation. How do I now? I mean, what do I do now when there is? How do I represent the noise added by these multiple sources inside the box in a convenient fashion that I can work with? Right. So in other words, uh, so let's assume that we have uh, you know as a user, I have a source uh, VI a source resistance rs and uh, some output voltage vo okay uh, and uh, you know every resistor is associated with the noise current vn and every uh, uh, every current so every, every um, transistor with a current source uh, whose details uh, can be found, right, from the operating point. Hmm? Now, uh, at a certain frequency f, I mean clearly there is a transfer function from the noise source to the output, correct? And uh, do you think that noise, the transfer function depends on uh, this guy rs or uh, it's independent of rs independent yeah, yeah well it, it depends so uh, uh, so i mean clearly rs is a i mean if you think of the whole thing as a network you know rs is a network element and in general the transfer function from vn to vo depends on rs all right the question is how does it depend on rs and to see that uh, let me draw your attention to um, first let me draw your attention to for example uh, another resistor rk does it do you think uh, the transfer function from vn to vo depends on rk Yes, no? Yes, all right. Uh, and uh, you know, can we make any comment about the transfer function from Vn to Vo at a certain frequency? Uh, you know, how it depends on Rk and how it depends on Rs? Can we make any comment at all? Given that this is a linear network. Oh well, uh, let's try and uh, and and uh, uh, and figure this out. Let's try first. You know, let me take an example and show you the result, and then uh, we'll see why that result makes sense. So let's say this is R one and R two, 
and uh, let us call this V2. and this is vi this is vo so vo by vi therefore is well it's simply r2 by r1 plus r2 and uh, v2 by vo by v2 is nothing but R1 by R1 plus R2. Okay, and now let's say uh, somebody gave you a more complicated network. R1, R2, R3, R4, and uh, you went and calculated. V O by V I and that turned out to be, let us say you, you calculated it and it turned out to be, uh, you got some answer uh, of the form R 4 square plus R 3 R 2 divided by R 1 square plus R 2 R 3 uh, plus R 4 square, right. I do not know, I mean, yeah, I, okay. Uh, well, can you comment on the correctness or the or the lack of it of this result? Is that do you think it is correct or wrong? Okay. All right. So he says okay, R4 tends to the okay. How about now? Pardon? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, basically, the key point that I wanted to, uh, I, you to uh, uh, observe or to know is that you cannot get terms of the form R4 square and R1 square and R2, I mean, you know, whatever, uh, you know, uh, R4 square in the denominator. You cannot get square terms in the, in the transfer function expression, right. And uh, uh, you know why? The, uh, uh, do you know why this is? It turns out, as we'll see tomorrow, that if you had an element, uh, say some element R3 uh, uh, in the network, any transfer function that you form will be what is called a bilinear function of of R3, right? And uh, will be of the form uh, you will have this of the form. A R3 plus B divided by C R3 plus D. Okay. In other words, in both the numerator and the denominator, you will get terms that can that, that you will get terms that contain R3, you will get terms that do not contain R3. Right? Okay. If you collect all the terms that contain R3, it turns out that you will get only you can pull out R3 as a, as a common factor, it only appears in the first degree, right? And likewise for the denominator. It is entirely possible that you get, uh, you know, uh, uh, a numerator or denominator which does not contain R3 at all, which is simply saying that both A and C are 0, correct? But if R3 appears, it will appear only in, in the first power, okay? It is actually pretty straightforward to see. Okay, uh, uh, and we'll see that uh, uh, tomorrow. And uh, uh, this is telling you that if you have an element, any transfer function that you can form will be a bilinear function. This is what is called a bilinear function. It turns out that any transfer function that you form will turn out to be what is called a bilinear function of of a particular element, right. Uh, 